do something wrong? This is a victory for the NAACP. It's, a, it's an honest-to-God legal precedent. How many other cities just pile the low-income housing into black neighborhoods or use federal money to segregate? This is, it's, it's a big win for the movement. Uh, 10 years ago, I had agreed. Back then, I'd have seen this case as the answer to a problem. Okay. Most of us would have, but we've been at this game a long time, Mike. Longer than you, and a lot of us are at the point where if they don't want to live with us, then why should we want to live with them? That was actor John Bernthal on the left of your screen, playing Michael Sussman in the new HBO miniseries, Show Me a Hero. It's all about the housing desegregation case against Yonkers in the 1980s. Federal Judge Leonard Sand ordered the city to build 200 units of public housing east of the sawmill, which was a mostly white and middle class neighborhood. Yonkers practically went bankrupt fighting the ruling before finally complying. And now 30 years later, the question is, did it accomplish its goal? And Michael Sussman, our guest tonight, of course, represented the NAACP throughout the case. Uh, first question, Michael, beyond how weird it is to see yourself portrayed on TV, how accurate, how close to, to the actual story does the miniseries come? Parts of it are very accurate. The raucous crowds at the Yonkers City Council, the tremendous antipathy toward the housing which is portrayed in, in East Yonkers. There was much more agitation, though, in the minority community, much more support for this than is shown. That scene with Dr. Hooks never did happen, so I'm not sure where that came from. But there is poetic license, which sure. I respect. And that theme, which Dr. Hooks is representing, is certainly something very worth noting, but it didn't happen that way. Let, let me ask you the, the, sure. the big picture question in all sure. this, which is, did the, did the, the settlement, did the, the whole process accomplish what you had hoped it would when, when you were in court? First of all, there was not just 200 units of public housing built. There were 800 additional units of housing which were deemed affordable or subsidized units in East Yonkers. So there were about 1,000 units. Given that East Yonkers' population was something in the neighborhood of 90,000, putting 1,000 units in within a, a 90,000 populace is obviously not going to, quote, desegregate the community. It was intended to send a message, though, that people could live, people of color could live throughout the city. And in that sense, it did send that message. And if you look at the census data, the city is somewhat more integrated today. But let me step back from another perspective. When South Africa had its apartheid era and post-apartheid era, they set up truth commissions. Probably the single most important lesson from those commissions was stimulating dialogue about the history of race relations. The Yonkers case was tried over 92 days in 1983 and 1984. Mm -hmm. I was much younger then. In those years, we told the story, which is chronicled in a 700-page opinion by Judge Sand, of how the city became segregated, how intentional choices led to that segregation. It didn't happen naturally. It happened by people making policy choices, which we showed were influenced by racial discrimination. That was affirmed by the Second Circuit. The Supreme Court never reviewed the case. When you ask the lasting legacy of the case, to me, it's that truth-telling process. We've got about 25 seconds. Given the Westchester housing settlement and housing segregation countywide uh, with the HUD settlement, do you have a feeling, do you feel like history is repeating itself? Do you feel like lessons have not been learned? There should have been a trial in Westchester County, and that trial should have depicted the same forces, which I believe do exist countywide, as in Yonkers. Michael Sussman, thank you so much. Can't wait to watch more from you this weekend on, thank you. on Show Me a Hero. Up next, Hurricane Katrina was a natural disaster, but also a political one. FEMA was late and it was slow. President Bush was initially a no-show and the suffering was unimaginable. Up next, a guy who was on the ground when the storm hit and had to deal with it all.